How can you translate the voice of your customers from something that is qualitative and hard to measure to something that is more specific and quantitative and easier to measure? In this video, I'm going to tell you exactly how you can do this by using the tool known as CTQ, aka critical to quality. And of course, I will also show you how to apply this method with a simple and relatable example. So the CTQ approach is a very useful tool and method that is usually used in the defined phase of a Six Sigma or Design for Six Sigma project to translate the voice of the customer into specific measurable performance requirements. But in my opinion, its application is very relevant in any other context where you have somewhat vague qualitative demands and requirements that you would like to quantify and have the ability to measure. So in short, CTQs are key characteristics whose performance standards must be met in order to satisfy our customers. And in order to minimize the chance of misinterpretation, it is very important that we formulate these requirements as specific as possible. Therefore, we say requirements are specific and measurable, are related directly to an attribute of a product or a service, don't have any alternative and don't bias the design toward a particular approach or technology, are complete and unambiguous, and describe what and not how. To put this in perspective, here is a very simple example. Let's pretend that you give your customers a form to fill out. To ensure that your customers are satisfied, after the customer has filled out this form, you ask them, what are your thoughts about filling out this form? And then your customer might answer, well, I really hate filling out this form. And that is probably not the answer we were hoping to get. But now that we have this answer from our customers, we might ask them for some clarification. So why don't you like filling out this form? And the customer might respond with something like, well, it takes too long to fill out. Because now that we have more clarity on what might satisfy our customers, we can ask for further clarification. Maybe we could ask our customer what they consider in this context to be too long. And to this, our customers might answer it with something like, well, anything more than five minutes is too long. Which means that our customer requirement is that the form should take less than five minutes to complete. This is, of course, a very simplistic example, but I hope that it's helping me to demonstrate and provide a better understanding of what I mean by translating the voice of the customer from something vague and qualitative to something measurable and quantitative. Now, let's get to the method. Uh, to go through this process, we usually apply what is known as the critical to quality tree. The CTQ tree provides an overview of the voice of the customers, which then branches out into more detailed CTQs. We can break the CTQ tree into four different sections, which I now will explain and demonstrate with another simple example. The first section of the CTQ tree is customer needs. Needs is where we identify the critical needs a product or service has to meet in order to satisfy the customers. This is the voice of the customer. In our restaurant example, our customer have a very vague and qualitative need, which is, I want to have a nice dining experience. And now that we know what our customer need is, let's use what we just learned to translate this need into something specific that we can actually measure. As we did in the previous simple example, we can now try to get a bit more clarification by asking our customers what a nice dining experience actually entails. And to this, our customer might answer, well, it entails the restaurant experience, the food quality, reasonable pricing, and of course, I also want to have a fast service. We call these quality drivers. Quality drivers are the second section of the CTQ tree. And as I showed in this section, we define specific quality drivers that needs to be present in order to satisfy the identified need. And the third section is performance requirements. Here we identify the requirements that needs to be satisfied for each of the quality drivers. And continuing with the restaurant example, we can now try to get even more clarification from our customers. Our goal is to identify performance requirement related to each of the quality drivers that we also have identified. Here we might identify that the quality driver restaurant experience is determined by two performance requirements, which are the restaurant should not be overbooked and the staff should not rush us while we are eating our meal. And you can do this with all of the other, other quality drivers. For example, the quality driver reasonable pricing could have the following performance requirement, wide price choices and special offers. 
Now that we have identified the performance requirements, we can start defining specific measurable targets for each of them. If we, for example, look at the performance requirements related to the quality driver fast service in our example, we might be able to translate not waiting too long for staff service into waiting time less than five minutes and not waiting for too long for our courses into less than 30 minutes. So in here in this video, you might want to press uh, pause and try to have a closer look and to get a better view of the details of the example that I have provided. I really like this example and I use it both in Lean Six Sigma certification courses that I teach to industry professionals as well as university students in a course we call Service and Work System Design at the Technical University of Denmark. I also have some more technical examples, but I really prefer to use this one because this is an example that most people can actually relate to and very easily understand. So the last thing I want to mention is that different ways you can set your specifications for the CTQs. So you can either have a one-sided specification, for example, the waiting time or a process time of a performance requirement needs to be less than X minutes, or you can have a two-sided specification, for example, the room temperature needs to be within a specific range between X and Y. And that was it. I hope that you found this video useful, and if you did, please give it a like. And for more videos like this, press the subscribe button.